Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the next episode in this van build series. I hope you're all doing well. In this week's video I will begin installing the electrical system. If you haven't seen the previous episodes yet, that might be worth a watch. I covered the LPG install, so running the gas pipe from the locker up to the hob and testing for leaks throughout. I found a leak on the high pressure hose from the gas bottle to the regulator. It wasn't actually a high pressure hose. So I've since replaced that with a new pigtail from the gas bottle to a new regulator and it's a 30 millibar regulator as opposed to the 37 millibar regulator that was in the van originally. Um, the book that I had stated that it should be a 30 millibar regulator with a maximum flow of 1.5 kilograms per hour. So that's what I've replaced it with. I've checked it over for leaks and secured the gas bottle in place. So I think we're good to go for the habitation check now. I think the bottle might need one more strap. I think they have to have a strap at the top and one at the bottom as well. Mine's only got one around the middle, but it's only a small bottle. I think it's safe, but let me know what you think in the comments if you know what you're doing. Um, it'd be great to hear from you. But in this week's video, I'm gonna be covering the electrical system. So to start off then, I'm gonna talk about the 230 volt side of the system. In the UK, most of our domestic circuits run at 230 volt. And in the van, I've installed lots of domestic sockets, so they need to be protected in the same way that they would be in your house. There's a few differences in the regs around installs in camper vans, so I'm going to be talking about that a little bit in this video, about how to select the right consumer unit for your van, and which cables to use, and also I'll talk about using a selector switch to select between inverter supply and shore supply. So once I've started on the 230 volt side of the system, I also want to incorporate the 12 volt side at the same time, so we can have it nice and neatly laid out on the board. So I'm also going to be covering the 12 volt side, everything from the batteries to the isolator, and from the isolator to the 12 volt fuse board. I'll also be talking about the solar charge controller, and the voltage sensitive relay, or split charge relay as they're also known, and protecting the cables in between. So there's lots to cover in this video and there will be more videos to follow so please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not already and if you click the little alarm bell you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And if you can do me a massive favour and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content or a thumbs down if you didn't please just let me know why in the comments um, so I can improve the videos for the future. That would be great. If you have any questions throughout this video, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them either directly or I'll include the answers in an upcoming video. So grab yourself a cuppa or a beer, or perhaps a glass of wine, and let's talk about the electrics. So the reason I've chosen this particular consume unit over a typical uh, garage consume unit like this one, is that this one has double pole circuit breakers here, and it's also got a reverse polarity uh, indicator neon up here. And because we're planning to do a bit of traveling around Europe, some countries, I believe, reverse the polarity. So if you're plugged into a hookup, what would usually be the line conductor is then the neutral. And then what would usually be the neutral conductor is then the line. So they switch them round. Because this consumer unit's got double pole circuit breakers, we're still protecting both the line and neutral conductors. Uh, it's obviously got an RCD. This is 25 amp RCD, 30 milliamp trip and this polarity indicator is good as well because if you are plugged into a hookup which has got reverse polarity this indicator light will light up um, and then you can use a, a cable for reversing the polarity back from the campsite hookup to your van. So it's a nice unit and it seems to be really well made. It's very compact. I've already run all the circuits throughout the van in this 2.5mm arctic cable. You get this in different colours. Um, it's basically just a heavy duty flex with a wider temperature range. You get it in blue, yellow and orange. And that's what's recommended in the regs that you use in a camper van because you've got um, a wide temperature range. It can be really hot or really cold inside the van. You don't want to be using household twin and earth. And the reason is because this twin and earth because it's only got a single core whereas this is stranded this work hardens over time and eventually with all the vibrations in the van it will snap 
So the next component in this install is this changeover switch. And that's for selecting between main took up and inverter supply. So we can get our 230 volt from the hookup on the side of the van or from our batteries through this inverter. And the reason we have this changeover switch um, is because we don't want the inverter supply and the hookup supply going into the consumer unit at the same time because it'll go bang. So wiring it through this, we can only ever have the inverter or the hookup selected. So at the back of the van underneath the bed, we're gonna have all our electrical system on this wall here. I've cut these boards out and given them a coat of varnish to protect the wood. We've got our wires behind there, which we need to connect up. Right, I'm gonna have my consumer unit in the corner here. And then the changeover switch just underneath it. So it keeps it all nice and neat and tucked away here. So I've cut this slot in the board for the cables to come through and we can now screw our consumer unit down. I'm going to use this coupler to connect the switch to the consumer unit. So I've spent absolutely ages trying to work out the best way uh, to have this so it looks nice and neat and it's practical. So I think I'm going to have the batteries this way. So then if we ever want to change them in the future for something different, we've got the space down here to maybe put in um, lithium batteries. So I now want to cut a hole through for all the wires to come through to this uh, 12 volt fuse board. And I could drill individual holes for each of the circuits either side of this and same down here but I'm actually going to router a groove in here so it makes um, switching circuits around much easier we don't have to take this whole board out to move the circuits if we need to so I'm just going to mark out where I want to router my groove so I've marked out where I want to router the slots for the cables to come through so I'm going to take this off so we can router the slots in. For routering these slots, I'm setting up the router so that it runs in this guide here. going to use a router to clean up these slots. We're going to do the same on the other side as well just so there's no sharp edges. So that's the distribution side. Here I've got my inverter. And that's going to go on there. So from the batteries, I'm then going to have this 12 volt battery isolator and that will be used to isolate the supply to the inverter and the 12 volt fuse board up here. And I'm going to be using fuses to protect the cables in between. You may have also seen these resettable circuit breakers. 
Um, I'm going to stick to using good old fashioned fuses, they're tried and tested, whereas these you can get some dodgy ones online and they don't tend to trip when they need to, they end up heating up and catching light. Also you get a problem with nuisance tripping with these, I've heard, and I don't want to alarm you if you have already used these because the chances are it's probably fine, it's just me being a bit particular, but still you might want to get it tested just to make sure it's not a dodgy one. So I'm now going to make up some cables from the battery to the isolator and from the isolator to our loads which in this case are the inverter and the 12 volt fuse board. So we need to make sure that we choose cable that is thick enough to deal with the current requirements of these circuits. I've got some 16 millimeter cable here rated at 110 amp and I'm going to use this for the 12 volt fuse board and I've also got some 25 mil cable and I'm going to be using this from the battery to the isolator and from the isolator to the inverter and this cable is rated at 170 amps. As you can see with these cable lugs I've got 25 mil ones with a 6 mil hole and 16 mil ones with a 6 mil hole and that's so that they fit nicely inside these MIDI fuse holders. I've got my heavy duty crimping tool for crimping the metal lugs onto the cables and this does a range of different size lugs. You just spin this round to the size you want so we're going to be doing 25 mil lock that in place and then you're ready to crimp the lugs on. So to keep everything neat and tidy I'm going to run it through this isolator so on our permanent live side I'm going to have the split charge relay from here going to the battery and then on the switch live side I'm going to have it going to the inverter and the 12 volt fuse board. So here we've got our various fuses and now I can connect them up to this Make sure we can open these fuse holders to change the fuses. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to run a short cable from this fuse to the inverter. So using a sharp knife I'm just going to trim this insulation back. To there. Put that over there. Like that. And crimp the lug on the end. I'm going to get the heat shrink, put it up over the cable lug. Like that. Let's connect up the split charge relay. So that's going to go there. So that's for the cable to come through for the other side of the split charge relay. So I've just sanded the paint off around this area. So I've got two ground points, one for the battery's negative terminal and one for the consumer unit. And they're separate but both bolted to the chassis of the van. I'm now going to strip the cable back on all my 12 volt circuits. First I'm going to run this data cable into the inverter and that's for the remote controller. And it's going to get a little bit tight through this hole. A little black wires the earth and then this one go down to our selector switch.
Right, that's the awkward fiddly bit done. Now, I can do a nice bit. A nice little job. Okay, so now I need to connect up my 230 volt side. So this is the cable from the inverter, so let's strip this back. Okay, do the same with this one, and this is from the hookup on the side of the van. So this particular switch has a wiring diagram on the website, uh, on Amazon. So if you want to get this particular switch, it's really easy to install. And I'll put a link in my Amazon storefront if you want to get it. So we've got our two supplies coming in the bottom here. This one's from the inverter and this one's from the hookup on the side of the van. And then goes through our switch, out the top of the switch, up to our consumer unit, into the RCD, and then to our circuits. Looks right to me, I followed the wiring diagram, so we'll soon find out if it goes bang. put that back see it's nice to have a bigger box here because and um, it makes it easier to fit all the wires in so this is all ready to go back I just need to wire up this reverse polarity indicator so I'm going to connect one side to the neutral and one side to the earth bar and then that will tell us if the neutral becomes live if we're somewhere where we've got a reverse polarity so let's put this in the top of the buzz bar Just go over all these terminals and just make sure they're nice and tight. So that's our basic electrical setup so far. As it stands, we can charge the batteries from the alternator through this split charge relay. So when we're driving around, our batteries will be charging now. My leisure batteries are sitting at about 12.74 volts at the moment and this split charge relay is currently open. So when I go and start the van, the alternator will be putting out about 14 volts, which is higher than 13.7. So that will energize this relay, close the switch and start charging my leisure batteries. So I'll show you that now. There we go, our batteries are charging from the alternator. So before you buy one of these voltage sensitive relays, you need to check whether your vehicle's got a smart alternator or not. If it's got a smart alternator, it's ECU controlled, so it stops charging the batteries when they're fully charged to save on fuel. Whereas with the older style alternators, they'll constantly put in out of 14 volts to charge the battery, um, even if the batteries are fully charged. So what I'm trying to say is if your vehicle's got a smart alternator, then you'll need to get a DC to DC charger instead of a voltage sensitive relay. They're also known as B to B or battery to battery chargers. And if your van's old like mine and it hasn't even got an ECU, then you'll need to get a voltage sensitive relay. So another way to charge your batteries when you're off grid is to use solar panels. I've got a 100 watt solar panel on the roof at the moment, but I'm planning to add another 200 watt one up there so altogether the solar array will be 300 watts and here I have a 30 amp MPPT solar charge controller um, to help regulate the charge voltage to the batteries so they charge nice and efficiently. You get MPPT solar charge controllers and pulse width modulation ones. The difference is that the MPPT are much more efficient than the pulse width modulation ones so you're harnessing more of the sun's energy to charge your batteries. I have used pulse width modulation ones in the past and 
they're okay but hopefully this one will be much better i've also got this dc circuit breaker as a way to isolate the supply from the solar panels to the solar charge controller and it comes in this nice little box i've also got this remote meter to go with the solar charge controller so we can keep an eye on the voltage from up in the control panel up there and finally i want to put this 230 volt socket at the back here for a battery charger for when we're on hookup and that gives us three ways of charging the batteries from the voltage sensitive relay the solar panels on the roof or a battery charger when we're on hookup right, let's put this socket in We just need one hole here for our comms cable to come through. Let's clean up the sharp edges. To add another socket in here, I've just cut the flexible conduit, pulled some of my cable out for one of the radial circuits. I'll cut this and then add a socket in. So these are my cables coming down from the solar panels and in order to wire up my circuit breaker I want to find out which ones are positive and which ones are negative and for doing that I can use my voltmeter on DC voltage setting and if I get my test leads and put this one on here and this one on here we can see we've got positive 20 volts DC. If we swap our test leads around we'll see we get minus 20 volts DC. So we know um, that that's not the right polarity because we want positive 20. So this is our positive on this side and this is our negative positive. Now the solar panel is live on the roof and it's sunny outside. So we've got to be really careful not to short these together because they will spark. And uh, we've only got 20 volts there, but still. So I'm going to put my positive in there and a negative in that side. In an ideal world, we'd keep both the positive and negative cables the same length, but because my batteries go down this way, my negative cable is going to be a bit longer. My heat gun's packed up, unfortunately. It's a very handy tool that little gas heat gun. Let's connect up the solar charge controller. Negative terminal on there. And we need another fuse from the solar charge controller to the battery. That's our positive. Let's tighten that up. It's really important that you don't um, connect up the solar panels before the batteries because it can ruin the charge controller so the batteries must be connected first
right, everything's connected up. I'm now gonna turn the supply on from the solar panels and we'll see what happens. There we go, you can see we've got this solar panel here charging the battery. This also comes with a temperature sensor for the batteries. So let's plug that into the port under here. So our solar panels come into the circuit breaker, then into the solar charge controller. And we're currently charging the batteries at 15 volts, 2.5 amps. The batteries are at 19 degrees. We've got our temperature sensor connected to the battery down here. This is our comms cable for the MT50 controller I'll be using. And we're protecting the cable uh, to the battery using this 50 amp fuse. Let's plug in our MT50 controller. Welcome. And here we've got our remote display showing us the charge voltage from the solar panels to the batteries, the battery condition, the healthy, and the load. Date and time. There's lots of different screens on here for monitoring. And if we go back, We've got all these settings as well. I need to do a bit of research to work out exactly how to set this up properly, but there we go, it's a nice unit. Let me show you how it works. So let's turn the isolator on. We've now got power to the inverter and this 12 volt fuse board here. I've put in the fuse for the fan just to show you. So I can, it works now. And a nice feature about this is that if one of your fuses blows, it's got this light that comes on to show you that you've got an open circuit. There we go, that's the first part of the electrical system, everything on the distribution side and charging the batteries for a fully off-grid camper van. I hope you found value in this content and you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you for watching if you've watched it this far, I really appreciate it. And um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Take care.